Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite Professor Paul Markle and uh, thanks for joining us today. Now the new episode, you've seen the title, it's called Lawyers, Guns, and Money and we're going to give acknowledgement to the late great Warren Zevon. Uh, you young kids probably don't know anything about that. Google it and you'll find out. Now what am I talking about? If you possess a firearm and you think that one day you may be called upon to use that firearm to defend your own life. Or maybe you're not. But if you have a gun that is your designated, or multiple guns that are designated personal defense or self-defense guns, this is what you need to understand. This is how the real world works. If you ever have to use that gun in a legitimate case of self-defense, you're not automatically going to be seen as a hero by the responding officers. What they're going to know is there were shots fired, they show up, there's you, there's the bad guy on the ground, put your hands up, and until we figure out what's going on, we're going to assume that you're a bad guy. Now that is where your lawyer comes in. Now. If you are a smart person, you probably understand that the uh, worst person to represent, represent, to represent themselves in court is yourself. You know, even attorneys don't represent themselves. You are emotionally involved in the situation. The worst person to be representing you is you. You want someone else to do it. Now, after the, you know, the smoke has cleared, the gunfire has stopped, that is not the time to think, maybe I should find an attorney. <laughs> Hopefully you have the number of an attorney before then. So what we've done for you this week is I actually did a little bit of research. I contacted my friends at the NRA's ILA, Institute for Legislative Action. They're the ones that monitor uh, all the new legislation and, and gun laws and so forth. Uh, the NRA's ILA, and I said, hey, I'm looking for a resource that I can recommend to my viewers where they can find pro-Second Amendment attorneys. Because, let's face it, the guy, the attorney, your tax attorney or your corporate attorney, they're probably, they might be, but probably aren't real hip on justifiable use of force and gun-related issues. So what you want to do is you want to find a guy that is. And what they gave me is they said you should go to the... T-H-E, shootersbar.org. And we're going to put the link up below for you guys right there. The shootersbar.org. It's not a drinking bar. It's like a legal bar. See the play on words right there. And these are right to keep and bear arms pro-Second Amendment attorneys. When you go to the website, what you'll see is you'll see the, the states you know, listed alphabetically. So all you have to do is, if you're looking for a pro-Second Amendment attorney, just go to Alabama or Alaska or you know, Connecticut or whatever, click on it, it'll give a recommendation of uh, attorneys that have actually volunteered their information to the shootersbar.org. Contact them, send them an email, what have you. Uh, real quick, if they have an email address, Use that first. If you just want to like vet them or check them out or what have you, don't call them up and say, hey, I saw your number on the, on the uh, website and I just want to talk to you for a little bit. Lawyers are busy people. If they're good lawyers, they're very, very busy people. My friend James likes to say, if you're looking for, attorney, for an attorney and they can get you in that day, that afternoon, they're probably not that good of an attorney because they're not very busy. A really good, no kidding attorney, it's probably going to take you a week or two to actually get a face-to-face -face with them if you're looking for a face-to-face. -face. So, uh, lawyers, guns, and money. The time to find an attorney and to secure an attorney's phone number is before you need them, not after. That's like running the store to buy a fire extinguisher when your house is on fire. Not a good idea. Now, what, uh, what is our product of the day? Our product of the day is this guy right here. This is the Pocket Lifesaver. And uh, if you've been following us, you know that we've done some special editions uh, that dealt with the recent attack in Boston and the medical emergencies that you, as a citizen, may encounter. And if you're a guy who uh, carries a gun or if you're a girl that carries a gun for a living, fantastic, that's great. But you need to understand that good guys can and do bleed as well as bad guys. You may win your gunfight and either you or someone you care about ends up bleeding. What are you going to do? You can't shoot the wound closed. And you might be thinking, 
I got it covered, Paul. Dude, I got an awesome pack. I got a backpack filled with medical gear, and I am set. Well, that's great. I've got a pack and it's in my truck. And I've talked to a lot of people and they're like, yeah, I've got an IFAC. I got a blowout kit. I got all that. It's in my car. It's in my trunk. It's in the pack. Well, do you have that with you when you're out and about? And the, the reason we came up with, and uh, we were making recommendations for where people could go and get different material. And what we found was people were like, don't tell me where to go. Just put the material together and sell it to me or you know put it in a package so what we did is we put a basic package together now is the pocket lifesaver as good as an IFAC or a blowout kit well no if I was the one laying on the ground bleeding out I would want two dudes with a big pack full of gear to run up to me and start working on me and that's great but if your pack is in a truck the truck is a half a mile away and the person that's bleeding to death is right here at your feet what do you tell them Hey, I got a really awesome kit in my truck. I'll be right back. Try and bleed slowly. Or just chill out. The ambulance will be here in 10 minutes. That's not what you want to do. You want to have something. What I refer to the pocket lifesaver, it's kind of like the life jacket or the fire extinguisher. My house was on fire. I'd rather there was, there was a big old red truck with hoses and 10,000 gallons of water. That's what I want. But I'm not, I would be glad to have a fire extinguisher first. So think about it like that, or you know, a life jacket. If I fell off of a ship in the ocean, I don't want to be bobbing around with just a life jacket on. I'd rather be in the boat, but I'd rather have the life jacket than nothing. And that's what this is. This is something to get you started, something that you can actually carry every day with you, and it's not a burden. It's not something that it's like heavy or annoying or what have you. Put it in your, get up in the morning, put your gun on, put your knife in your pocket, put the pocket lifesaver in a pocket, and drive on. And stop thinking about it. And then if you should happen to need it, it'll be there. So for all things Student of the Gun, where you're going to go, you're going to go to studentofthegun.com. And for links for what we just talked about, look right down there and you'll find the links.